It's a great day. My name is Che Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country where we are on a mission. And our mission really is to empower. Our mission is to inspire. And our mission is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve and on this episode we have the one and only sherry winesett who's in the building and she'll be talking about transparent leadership hmm this should be interesting what's going on sherry how are you hey che thanks so much for having me today i'm excited to be here thank you so much for being here today we appreciate it as well and shout out to tina for connecting us she's an amazing individual certainly she is absolutely um, as we get started, I'm going to ask the obvious. Please don't throw anything at me through these fiber optic lines. But leadership, it means different things to different people. And we have some folks on here that are, are managers and leaders of organizations, some manager and leaders of, of nonprofits, and many of them are entrepreneurs. So they're leading their own mission, goals, and objectives. So my question is, can you share your definition of leadership? What does it mean these days? And what is your meaning when you hear the word, people hear the word leadership that we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, you know, I, I think to me, leadership means, you know, someone who is focused on setting others up for success. Right. To me, leadership is someone who is a great mentor, who's an active listener, investing in their people. And I think, you know, today we need transparency in leadership. In fact, people are demanding transparency in leadership. You know, now that we're in the digital age, you can find out a bunch of things online. And, uh, you know, people just want someone who's going to be real with them, someone they can trust. You know, they want someone who's authentic, who's walking the walk, talking the talk, and um, really engaging the team, right? Not just thinking about themselves. And I think, you know, really what's happening is um, a lot of companies aren't, they're, they're becoming so focused on themselves. You know, they're not thinking about their culture. They're not thinking about the, that you can have the best business model, right? You can have the best business model in the world. You can have all the money to invest in your business. But if you aren't taking care of the people and you don't have the right people on the bus that, you know, are being led, right, by someone that they actually admire and want to follow, you're, you're not going to have a business that can gain traction. You're not going to have a successful business. So it's just mm. so these days. I'm curious. Again, this is just Shay Brown, probably the only one who has this question out there. It sounds like if we would just fire those folks. I mean, it just sounds like if they're not doing the things you said, I know it's probably wrong. Don't, please don't send me no emails or anything, no DMs. I'm just an entrepreneur out here. So my question <laughs> is, why are people struggling? Why are leaders today struggling to do all the things that you just said, which seems like that's what they were hired to do? I mean, you know, they get paid all this money. So it's probably an unfair question, but why are leaders struggling today? to do the things you just talked about? Well, you know, I think a lot of leaders out there are managers and they've been taught to manage people. And really, you know, what they're struggling with is, is self-awareness and, um, you know, getting that outside perspective, like really working harder on themselves than they do on the job. And, you know, where are those resources coming from? You know, are companies investing it? Are they building cultures of learning? Um, you know, I, I think transparency comes from the top. You know, people want to know what are the numbers? What, what, what are the goals I'm hitting? They want to know, you know, what the vision is. But guess what? They're not going to follow your vision until they bought into you. So, you know, I, I think what we're struggling with is connection and building relationships with people. And, you know, there's so many opportunities, Jay, like with the, you know, everybody having the opportunity to be virtual and working online, you know, they can work for anyone. And so, you know, we have to invest more in being more transparent, being vulnerable and relating to the people that we work with because they'll just go somewhere else. 
I know y'all are wondering as well, who is this person, Shay? Who in the LL Cool J is this woman is talking? I know some of you read her bio. I get it. Some of you are already Googling her. I get it. We'll get into her background in a moment. But, but first, I've got to ask, because she brought up something that's very important. She said some folks have to be a leadership of folks they don't get a chance to see every single day. And some of you are leaders of folks you see every single day. And some may have a combination. So this might be a loaded question. It might be unfair, but I'm curious... Is there a difference in leadership styles between the person that is listening right now? And they're like, well, Shay, I want her to know that, first of all, half my team is virtual and half of them I see. And some of them only see a couple of days or once or twice a week anyway. So while she's here, talk about being transparent. Is there a difference for the leader that has to be transparent to folks who are virtual or a combination of virtual versus someone that they get to see every day in the office? Uh, it's an unfair question, but I mean, I'm just curious what your thoughts are. You know, I, I think it's all about adapting your leadership style to whatever situation you're in. And a lot of times, you know, we do these assessments and we're like, I'm this type of leader, but truly you need to be able to adapt your leadership style to the situation that you're in. And that's where, you know, I talk about seven keys to, to really unlock your leadership potential, but one of them is 360 degree accountability and, and awareness and really understanding how you are as a leader and how you can adapt to others to, to set them up for success and get results. That's what's really key. That there are differences, you know, on how you're going to connect with someone on a virtual call with a virtual team versus being in the office and, you know, being able to have those sidebar conversations. But that's where leaders are struggling. And so that's why you have to get really laser focused on becoming aware of who you are as a leader. Ah, I love it. In the moment, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry. She's not going to leave you hanging. She's got these steps. Don't worry. We made a mental note of it. We're going to come back to that. But first, let's slow down and then we speed up. Maybe give Sherry a moment to tell us, you know, the question, who are you? That'd be pretty cool because we just kind of jump right into it. And then what's your backstory that led you to doing what you're doing now. And then we're going to get into this book that she's written, by the way, because um, it's going to not only make a difference for you as a manager or a leader or an executive or an entrepreneur, or maybe you're a mom or a dad, you're just a good human being. It can help all of us in life. But first, Sherry, they don't care about that part. They want to know, who are you? What's your backstory? What's that defining what? moment that led you to doing what you're doing now? Oh my gosh, where did it all begin? It's, it's been such a journey. So um, I am a recover, I'd like to say I'm a recovering international lobbyist, <laughs> but I started my career as a lobbyist. And during that time, I was helping, you know, CEOs and general counsels of Fortune 100 companies just really devise legislative and regulatory strategy. And then I did that for about 10 years. And then I decided to become an entrepreneur. I started my own business coaching business, built a firm, did a couple mergers, sold that. And then um, I was recruited to come build a company, a, a leadership executive coaching franchise. So I was a franchise executive for a number of years. Um, and then, you know, once I transitioned out of that role, I was like, it's time to write my book, right? Fast forward to 2023, I think is when Tina and I started working on it. And what's interesting, Shay, is that I've had this the outline of this book for nine years. And a lot of people ask me, well, why didn't you write it nine years ago? And it's because I wasn't ready. I hadn't experienced enough. I didn't have my client, you know, all the great client stories. Um, so fast forward, that's how I got here today. And really, I think the aha moment that, that made me say, okay, I'm ready to write this book after I got all the stories and had more experience, it was really determining who I wanted to help. And once I figured out that I want to help the person I used to be, it all came together. Wow. So tell us, we're on a pins and needles. Uh, what's the name of the book? Oh, well, the book is Transparent Leadership for Women Who Mean Business. And in it, I just talk about the seven keys to, to help women unlock their true leadership potential. But I really give them an action plan that they can walk away with. Like there's so many tools in there. 
um, you can just pick one or two and, and you're going to be able to really become the best version of yourself. And if you don't mind, I'd love to share why it's so important to me and to absolutely. help women. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I was, I was climbing the ladder and, and I had this amazing career and then I, I launched my own business and I was an entrepreneur, but along the way, I wore all these hats, just like all women do, you know, we're caretakers, we're mothers, we're wives, we're daughters. I mean, you name it, right? We're volunteers, we're, we're entrepreneurs, we're these, you know, incredible driving forces, but sometimes it gets really hard. And, you know, I just want, I've seen a lot of women give up on their professional goals because they're juggling a lot and it gets hard, but they don't have to, you know, like we can do hard things. And when we're going through, you know, hard times where we feel like we're not the priority, we just have to, I want them to remember it's just a season. It's just a season in your life. And we are, I believe that, you know, we have a responsibility to lead and that women have unique abilities to lead. And I talk about those in my book and that, you know, the next generation is depending on us because how they are led is how they're going to lead others. So I'm really passionate about it. And, I, and I'm just so excited to, to impact women across the globe. I can hear the, you know, the sparkle in your eyes. You saw the energy going on. She got the waving back and forth. She got talking about that book. Um, ladies and gentlemen, she can't give you all the steps, obviously, but don't worry. I'm going to ask her to give you maybe one. She gave you one. I'm going to ask her if she'll just peel back the big black curtain a little bit, just reach in there and maybe grab one more step. And then she's going to, don't worry, she'll tell you how to get the book and how to use the book and so forth. Um, but if you're out yeah. there right now, I want you to kind of to lean forward because this is a good opportunity. One thing about all of us uh, superstars, they all hold a common belief we can all get better. Although it's for women, I'm sitting on the front row because I know I can take this idea as well, by the way. So do you mind sharing just one step out of that seven step book with all those tools and resources in it? Can you share with the audience, please? Oh, which one? And thank you for saying that, Shay, because um, it truly, these principles can help anyone in leadership. You know, this isn't about men versus women. This is just about, you know, me being able to help the person I used to be. And so, um, gosh, out of the other six, which one should I share? Well, um, alignment. So alignment is such a critical component to being a great leader. And, you know, a lot of leaders don't know how, you know, the, the intent is there, but maybe they don't know how to align their team. They don't know how to align everyone on the vision or, or the goals or the values within the organization. And with lack of alignment, that's where you see a huge communication breakdown, right? Because we aren't aligned. So then we start um, not trusting people. You know, we start making up things in our head and we're all not, you know, moving in the same direction. Alignment is so critical to any team and it's not just within your team. You know, leaders, you know, should really look outside uh, their teams and look at where's the cross alignment within any organization or in any business. So uh, there's a lot of ways to align um, within an organization. You know, it can start, obviously it can start with planning days, strategic planning days. It can, you can uh, bring your team together for 90 day planning. You can do group coaching. Um, there's so many things that you can do for alignment. And what's cool is that most people don't do any of these. And so if you just pick one, like you're going to see awesome results within your, your team. Ah, I love it, by the way. And as you were talking, uh, folks are nosy. They're, they're looking over your shoulder and behind you say, Shay, what's that oh. written on her wall? She has it right there. Can Oh, it says grateful. They, they were all nosy, by the way. And I, I'm, I wasn't <laughs> the only one. And now that y'all have seen the word grateful, y'all know exactly what it says. Of course, she knows the fall of a question. She wants you to see it. You got the word grateful back there. Um, why is that so important 
to you, I get the word, but why is it so important to you? Reminded that's right there behind you. Um, we're all curious. You know, it's just, I really believe that where you are right now is exactly where you are supposed to be. And so, you know, just take a breath. It's okay. And just be grateful and embrace what is right in front of you right now. Um, I'm grateful to be a mom. I'm, I'm grateful for, for failures, you know, that, that are, are teaching me what doesn't work. So then I can go out and find out what does work. And you really can be grateful for everything that's handed to you in your life, because even if you view it as something that, well, why should I be grateful for that? Like that wasn't so fun. It's a lesson. And it happens because it's setting you up for success in the future. So I'm just so grateful to have this opportunity to be with you. Um, I think gratitude is just so important in our lives. And, you know, it, it's, um, what do I want to say? It's, it's contagious. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for being transparent, ladies and gentlemen. She didn't, she didn't give me any questions. It was one of the ones I had to ask some questions. She's like, Shay, can we just have a conversation? I think transparency, leadership is so important and she's being so transparent with you right now. So thank you so much, by the way. We really appreciate that, by the way. For folks that are that are watching that, one of the questions I like to ask when I get time, we have a few minutes now, is what's one of the best pieces of advice maybe you've ever been given has helped you on your journey? Now, Ladies and gentlemen, let me preframe it for all the new folks out there. We're not asking to come down with the Ten Commandments off the mountain, okay? That's not what we're asking. But um, she's had so many mentors along this journey of life. She's read, I don't know how many books, who knows how many YouTube or videos she's watched in her lifetime. But if you had to reach out and say, you know what, here's one of the best pieces of advice I've ever been given. It might be from her book, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to find out. But what's one of the best pieces of advice I've ever been given that you want to share with the audience just to help them in, in life in general? What comes top of mind to you? Oh, man. Um, oh, gosh, you know, you've stumped me here because there's so many. I've gotten so much great advice. I've had, you know, the opportunity to have so many great mentors. And, and, and I, I really hope that everyone on this call who's a leader or aspiring leader just realize how important it is that mentoring role, you know, that you have. In, in within your team, among your children, you know, among your siblings, like just being a mentor really can change anyone's life. But I'm going to pull a quote that I've absolutely always loved. And it's from Jim Rohn. And it's work harder on yourself than you do on your business. And, you know, just creating all that self-awareness and becoming the best version of yourself that you can be, not just for people you work with, but for everyone in your life, you know, that that's just going to have an amazing impact. Um, so that's probably my best piece of advice. Isn't it so kind of crazy? It's so timeless all these years later. Perfect. Well said, by the way, As we come down the home stretch, um, two part question. Number one, what type of clients is your firm looking to work with these days, if any? And number two, how can I connect with you? How can I get the book? I mean, where can they go? We want to know. So please, please share with us. Oh, thank you so much. So um, you can get the book. You can get on the wait list and uh, be the first to know when it launches, which is this month, very soon, um, by going to transparencyinleadership.com. And um, let's see, what else? Oh, how can you connect with me? Uh, gosh, you can go to Facebook, um, front slash Sherry Winesett. Gosh, shape. we're going to have to spell that out for them. S-H-E-R-I-W-I-N-E-S-E-T-T. -E um, and then you can also connect with me on Instagram, you know, under Sherry Winesett, or you can go to LinkedIn and find me at Sherry Winesett. So, uh. I love it. And what type of clients are you looking to work with for, or any at this time? Is your firm taking on the additional clients? Yeah, we are taking on a, a few coaching clients and really we're looking for um, female executives, you know, who just want to become a better version of themselves, who want to help to get their team to the next level um, or CEOs. You know, we work with a lot of CEOs and it can be really lonely at the top, right? 
And so having a, a coach um, to talk to be a sounding board, someone that you can confide in and get some advice from is really key. And so we love working with CEOs and usually that involves working with their executive teams. So that's who. Fantastic. Well, let me say, first of all, thanks so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. I recommend everybody get on the wait list for transparencyinleadership.com. I think that's what I heard. Transparencyinleadership.com. Be the first to get the book, by the way. Thanks so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. And thank you to viewers. Thank you for tuning in. Without you, there is no show. I never get tired of reminding you every night, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that you're amazing. You're incredible. Hit the share. Hit the like button. That's okay. Hit the share button. Pay this message forward to someone else so their business can be better. Their leadership can be better. And they can do more, be more, have more, give more as a result of being a better person. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all next time. God bless and keep doing God's work. Peace.